Hello, welcome to the Improving Sleep webinar. My name is Dr. Omar Kaulesa and I'm a clinical psychologist. I will be guiding you through the webinar today, which will last approximately 15 minutes. Over the course of this webinar, we'll be covering the following areas. Understanding why we need sleep and the effects of sleep on our functioning to recognise how much sleep we do actually need. And finally, to learn some helpful strategies to improve our sleep. I'm going to start off by reading you this quote by Alan Rechstefan. If sleep does not serve an absolutely vital function, then it is the biggest mistake the evolutionary process has ever made. Now this hints at the importance of sleep, not only to humans, but to all animals. For those of you who are interested, Alan is currently professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Psychology at the University of Chicago, and his work into sleep research has been in the areas of insomnia, narcolepsy, sleep apnea, and napping. Sleep has been and continues to be extensively researched we still don't fully understand it, but what we have learned is that sleep is universal. Without exception, every animal studied to date sleeps or engages in something remarkably like it. Did you know that worms sleep? Well, they do. And these have been around since the Cambrian period, which mean that sleep's at least 500 million years old. Even aquatic animals that need to swim all day, every day sleep. How do they do this? Well, it turns out that some animals like fish and birds can sleep with one half of their brains while the other side stays awake. What's really interesting is that if you get a bunch of birds together and observe their sleep, you might just see them line up in a row with the birds on the inside enjoying two eyes shut full of sleep while the birds on the ends have one eye open and half of their brains asleep. The best part is that midway through the sleep session, the birds on the end will turn the other direction and shut the other eye to give the other half of their brain some sleep. We'd be wise to remember that anything so universal must have an incredibly strong evolutionary reason for its existence. Violate millions of years of evolution at your own risk. As adults, we should all sleep for between seven to nine hours each day. Roughly speaking, that means about a third of our lifetime should be spent sleeping. Take a moment and ask yourself, do you get enough sleep? And I want to be specific here, by enough, I mean, do you get between seven and nine hours of sleep each night, every night? Unfortunately, all too often the answer to this question is no. So what does this mean? Well, in the short term, what we notice is that a lack of sleep impacts on our attention and productivity. It increases our stress hormone, it increases our blood pressure, and we notice increased rates of absenteeism from work and accidents at work, home or on the road. Long-term consequences of sleep deprivation include increased morbidity and mortality from accidents on the road or at home, an increase in coronary heart disease and stroke, increases in obesity and type 2 diabetes, a compromised immune system, and an increased risk in developing mental health conditions such as anxiety and depression. Now I'm sure that you've heard this sort of statement before and maybe some of you are thinking this right now but the problem is with long-term sleep deprivation over months or even years people can actually acclimatize to their impaired performance, lowered alertness and reduced energy levels. That low level exhaustion actually becomes their accepted norm or baseline. Individuals fail to recognize how their long-term lack of sleep has come to compromise their mental aptitude and physical vitality, including the slow accumulation of ill health. 
This means that millions of people unwittingly spend years of their life in a suboptimal state of well-being and function. The fact of the matter is, you don't know how sleep deprived you are when you're sleep deprived. Now let's move away from the bleak consequences of lack of sleep and understand a bit more about what happens when we sleep, then look at what we can do to help improve sleep. We used to think that sleep was a passive state and that the brain would go into a sort of shutdown mode that allowed us to recover from the previous day. We now know that sleep is a whole lot more complicated and it is a much more active state than you might think. In fact, when you're sleeping, there's complex changes in brain activity that follow a specific four stage cycle. And in total, this cycle tends to last for about 90 minutes. We must experience all four stages of the sleep cycle in order to wake up feeling rested. And a good night's sleep consists of about four to five cycles. There are two basic types of sleep. Non-rapid eye movement sleep, which has three different stages, and REM sleep. Each stage is linked to specific brain waves and neuronal activity. You cycle through all stages of non-REM and REM sleep several times during a typical night, with increasingly longer, deeper REM periods occurring towards morning. Stage 1, non-REM, is a changeover from wakefulness to sleep. During this short period, which can last several minutes, a relatively light sleep, your heartbeat, breathing and eye movement slow and your muscles relax with occasional twitches. Your brain waves begin to slow from their daytime wakefulness patterns. Stage two is a period of light sleep before you enter deeper sleep. Your heartbeat and breathing slow and muscles relax even further. Your body temperature drops and eye movements stop. Brain wave activity slows it is marked by brief bursts of electrical activity. You spend more of your repeated sleep cycles in stage two sleep than any other sleep stages. If you were to schedule in a power nap, you'd want to wake up after this stage of sleep. We'll talk more about that in a few moments. Three is a period of deep sleep that you need to feel refreshed in the morning. It occurs in longer periods during the first half of the night your heartbeat and breathing slow to their lowest levels during sleep. Your muscles are relaxed, brain waves becoming even slower. If you get woken during this phase of sleep, it is common to feel quite disorientated. In REM sleep, stage four, your eyes move rapidly from side to side behind closed eyelids. Mixed frequency brainwave activity becomes closer to that seen in wakefulness. Your breathing becomes faster and irregular, and your heart rate and blood pressure increases to near waking levels. Most of your dreaming occurs during REM sleep, although some can occur during non-REM sleep. Your arm and leg muscles become temporarily paralyzed, which prevent you from acting out your dreams. Interestingly, as you age, you spend less time in REM sleep. I just wanted to touch on dreaming. Everyone dreams. You spend about two hours each night dreaming, but may not remember most of your dreams. Its exact purpose isn't known, but dreaming may help you to process your emotions. Events from the day often invade your thoughts during sleep, and people suffering from stress or anxiety are more likely to have frightening dreams. Dreams can be experienced in all stages of sleep, but usually are most vivid in REM sleep. When it comes to sleeping, a lot of people often ask about cat naps or power naps. More than 85% of mammalian species are polyphasic sleepers, meaning that they sleep for short periods of time throughout the day. Humans are part of the minority of monophasic sleepers, meaning that our days are divided into two distinct periods, one for sleep and one for wakefulness. It is not clear that this is the natural sleep pattern of humans. Young children and elderly persons nap, for example, and napping is a very basic and important aspect for many cultures. There is a large body of research to suggest that more developed countries such as the UK are becoming more and more sleep deprived. 
and it's our busy lifestyle that keeps us from napping. The key point is, naps do not make up for inadequate or poor quality nighttime sleep, but a short nap of about 20 to 30 minutes can help to improve mood, alertness and performance. Make sure that you don't nap for longer than this as it can leave you feeling groggy and interfere with your normal sleep routine. Tips for getting a good night's sleep. In the morning, try to keep a regular sleep-wake schedule. Keeping regular hours helps the body's sleep system stay in harmony and promotes feelings of sleepiness and drowsiness when your body is ready for sleep. Therefore, where possible, wake up at the same time each morning and go to bed at the same time every night. Get out into natural light when you can, preferably around the same time every day. Natural light, which still can be effective on a cloudy or gray day, helps to reset our internal body clock. It helps us to get over feeling groggy when we've just woken up and makes us feel more alert. During the day, try to engage in daytime exercise. Exercise helps you to sleep for longer and improves the quality of your sleep, making it deeper and more refreshing. Just be careful not to exercise too close to bedtime though, as this can actually stimulate you and make it more difficult to get to sleep. As a general rule of thumb, try to finish exercising about two hours before bedtime. Avoid food and drinks that contain caffeine. Caffeine is a powerful stimulant and while its effects varies from person to person, it should be avoided a few hours before trying to get to sleep. In the evening, don't overeat or go to bed hungry or thirsty. In fact, eating at regular times helps strengthen our internal body clock. However, eating a heavy meal before bedtime can make it challenging to sleep at night. Drinking lots of liquid before bed will also increase the chances that we'll have to use the bathroom during the night. Conversely, being hungry or thirsty at night can increase the chances of waking up. The goal is to find the right balance between being too full and hungry before going to bed. Cut down your screen time before bedtime and try to avoid it completely in the bedroom. Using electronic devices just before bed and in the bedroom can keep us awake for longer as the blue light from these devices has the capacity to prevent the hormones that make us feel sleepy from being produced. Importantly, it's not just the light that can affect our sleep, but the act of using the device can keep us awake and alert for longer, which we don't want to when we're trying to sleep. Don't use alcohol to help you sleep. Although alcohol is a sedative, it can have a significant impact on the quality and quantity of your sleep. Our sleep tends to become fragile and light when we have a lot of alcohol in the evening. We can sometimes feel groggy and unrefreshed upon waking, and our general functioning and emotional well-being can also be affected during the day. At night, avoid nicotine before bed. Nicotine is a short-acting stimulant that can keep you awake, and so should be avoided in the later part of the evening and during the night if you happen to wake up. Make sure your bedroom is cool, dark and quiet before bed. Heat, light and noise can impact on our ability to get off to sleep and increases the chances that we will wake in the night. Making sure your bedroom is conducive to relaxing and therefore sleep is really important, as is having a comfortable and supportive mattress. Consider repositioning your clocks so you can't see them when you're lying down in bed. The reason for this is that it's common for some of us to repeatedly check the time when we're awake at night, and this can increase our anxiety levels and further reduce the chances of falling asleep. It's not necessary to remove the clock completely, but having the clock face out of sight can reduce any sleep anxiety. Don't lie in bed if you can't get off to sleep, because you're just going to make yourself more frustrated. Instead, do something else, like read a book or listen to some relaxation music until you feel tired. If you're regularly having problems sleeping, 
or feeling unusually tired during the day, make sure you do speak to your GP. Most sleep disorders can be treated effectively, so please don't delay. Get the help and support you need, because after all, it's such an important part of our life. Here are some websites where you can find some more information on the benefits of sleep, sleep problems and the treatments for sleep disorders. Thank you for listening to this webinar. I hope you have found it informative. Take care.